My boy pageant fans, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey Adam G. So after the Miss Supranational candidate stunned us during the sashing ceremony last week, it's the turn of their male counterparts to do the same thing at this juncture of the competition. There are 31 contestants so far who are vying for this year's edition and I must say they all look smashing in their turns during the sash during the sashing ceremony last night. To be honest guys, I really feel this introduction part of the sashing ceremony is really a game changer as we can already see as early as now who can talk the walk as they say at the same time because I really have to say this as early as now. Most of the perceived front runners for this batch did not quite live up to my expectations. Hence, there are other guys who caught my, my attention not just with their looks but with their speaking ability and charisma in doing so. So without further ado, here are my top 13 picks for the Mr. Supranational 2023 Sashing Ceremony. I actually have 20 guys in my list but for the purpose of shortening this video I'll list down 13 guys. So number 13 on my list is Dr. Adip Duitama from Indonesia. You know what guys if you have been following me on Instagram you know how much I have been adoring him with his likeness and well-being. I really feel Dr. Adib has the most impressive resume out of this batch with his occupation as a doctor, travel host, and charity work. As you have seen in my previous interviews with him on Instagram, he is so likable and engaging and I'm so glad he showed it at the sashing ceremony last night where he captivated us with an interesting fact about himself that he likes to take care of reptiles as pets. And that's a lot. And I'm scared. As a pageant fan, I really remembered him because he made himself very interesting and memorable. And the way he delivered it, it was just light and fun. And now we go to my 12th spot and I'm giving it to Ra Singh from India. Oh gosh, this guy really knows how to thrill us. He really knows how to thrill his audience with his choice of words and charismatic persona. Limitedly naughty but unlimitedly loving. Wow. His name means king in India, but he only aims to please our hearts. Parang ang dami niyong baong pick-up lines to give away from his bag and I'm so loving it. He made it so fun and engaging despite the, despite the fact that he was bullied when he was younger. Obviously, he was able to overcome it. He's really got character, I must say. And now we go to my 11th spot and I'm giving it to Luis Portelas from Canada. When it comes to personality, charisma, and PR skills, can anyone beat this guy right now? I mean, what he lacks in the physical aspect, he more than makes it up with his overflowing charisma. And it was very evident during his turn at the sashing ceremony last night. We all love him as a pageant vlogger and music enthusiast, and we now love him even more for being so inspirational almost bordering to a motivational speaker who could inspire us to chase our dreams no matter how difficult it could be. It's just so heartwarming to see a fellow pageant vlogger sizing the day or seizing the day and conquering the odds one day at a time in this pageant. He is really taking a huge risk because if he doesn't make it past top 10, this could really affect his credit uh, his credibility as a pageant vlogger but i i really salute him for taking the gumption to go for the gold so mabuhay ka mr luis portelis and now we go to my top 10 and number 10 on my list is i know you'll be surprised jacob vitek from czech republic Super inspiring. That's what I am getting from this guy the moment he introduced himself on stage. I wasn't actually expecting anything from him when he went up on stage, but as soon as he talked a portion of his life story of his life story, I started taking a dub a second look at him. He is so humble and inspirational, having experienced many struggles in life in getting to where he is as a successful IT engineer and a successful leader of his community. Listening to him, he really appealed to me emotionally, and that's and that's a very different kind of sexy. So I am just in awe of people who are self-made. And now we go to my ninth spot, and I'm giving it to 
Ivan Alvarez from Espana. Oh god, he really has strong stage presence with his looks and towering heights. So I also like the fact that he made an effort that, that he made an effort to speak in English despite the obvious language barrier. So A for effort. Right now, I know everyone is on his bandwagon and I could ride on that too. Except that I hope he speaks in the vernacular if he gets to top 5 in the finals on July 15. Cause I mean, in naman natin, I have seen so many ridiculously good-looking Spanish guys get whacked out in the top five because of their lack of facility in the English language in the past. So, he really has to be, to be honest, if I were him right now, I would be so worried as early as now because I remember his predecessor back in 2021 where he chose to speak in English, which ultimately failed to be a wise decision as that particular guy ended up in the bottom of the top five that year. I also remember his other compatriot in Mr. International last, last year where he was a top pick to win only to be stopped by a hard question in the Q&A. If RNB España, his organization, is listening, I hope part of their strategy is for him to speak in Spanish all across his interviews in this pageant to make him more confident and powerful on stage. And now we go to my 8th spot and I'm giving it to Luca Oderin from the Netherlands. He seems to be a very shy and quiet type of guy and I get that. But for some reason, his shyness quite worked on stage as he gave a very simple introduction about himself. For me, he is just effortlessly charming and the way he commanded attention from the audience the moment he walked in the room, ang lakas! But more than that, I was so enamored by about by his multicultural background, which makes him a polyglot who could speak seven languages. So beat that. Grave. I just love him. He's very unassuming and probably that's his brand of charm. Mind you, this guy could even be a good interpreter for this year's pageant. And now we go to my seventh spot and I'm giving it to Bruno Barbirito from Ecuador. To be honest guys, he is my presumptive winner at the moment and I am so glad that this lad turned on the charm with his looks and charisma during his turn at the sashing ceremony last night. The confidence that he just radiates in rocking that chartreuse outfit is just very very commendable as it's so hard to pull off that collar. But more than that, it's his ability to draw the attention from himself that captivated me here. He talked more about his country in his intro with his choice of words in describing it. I have never been to South Am I have never been to South America all my life and so hearing the way he describes it makes me want to put it under my travel bucket list. On this aspect alone, he could already be a brand influencer or ambassador and I hope the Supra organization is finally taking notice. And now we go to my top six and number six on my list is Kantan Burgas 3 from Fuans. First thing I notice about him is his incredible sex appeal on stage. Yup, damn, he's so hot. However, all that gushing I had with him suddenly disappears the moment he introduces himself to the audience as he talks about his country and previous medical condition. On this occasion, he chose to talk about this to inspire us to go on with life's adversities and the way he conveys his message is very heart tugging even when we clearly see English is not his first language. He's sexy, brooding, and mysterious, yet can easily charm us with his candor the moment he speaks. And I am truly captivated. And now we go to my top five. And number five on my list is, surprise, 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 Johannes Rissler from the Philippines. I know, call me biased again but give credit where it is due. I honestly have low expectations about this guy given his performance during his turn at the Supra online chat two weeks ago, but my god, I was too stunned with the Johannes Riesler we saw at the sashing ceremony last night. Grabe, what did the gods do to him to be this relaxed, suave, and confident with his introduction? Lalaking lalaki na Robin Padilla vibe na hindi ko ma-explain. And the way he styled himself here leaves me so breathless right now. Like, my gosh! Pag naayusan at natutukan yung styling talaga niya, and even with his hair, he completely looks like a different person altogether. So kudos to all his stylists right now for making him wear an orthodox suit color, which is pink, 
which really made him a standout in this occasion. You can see pinagahandaan ng org at ng stylist niya, yung mga outfits niya, judging from the, from those outfits so far. And his communication skills, I know it's a prepared speech, but it still resonated with us given how he loves to talk about one of his passions in life, which is music. He was just so impressive here. Hence, I really hope this is not just a fluke that he is here to thrill us till the end. For the first time ever, nabuhayan ako ng loob na pwede tayo mag top 10 after forever for languishing in the top 20 since this pageant started in 2016. Or sige na nga, top 5. Pero let's manage our expectations. And now we go to my fourth spot and I'm giving it to Enrique Martins from Brazil. Oh my god. If Spain doesn't watch out, this guy could definitely win it all. He just radiates with so much charm and likability in his introduction. And I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that he keeps smiling. So all the more he is connecting to me as a pageant fan. The athleticism in him as well is really giving him the edge. His stance, his demeanor, that inner confidence that screams winner already in my book as early as now are very, very evident. I can really see the hype now. Hope he does well in the competition. And now let's go to my top three and number three on my list here is Tylo Ribeiro from South Africa. This guy gets even more handsome when he speaks. I mean, who here is not amazed by this guy's communication skills? It's really way, way, way up there. He is just very eloquent and full of passion. He was just so memorable talaga here as he talked about one skill we didn't know he has. That he knows how to communicate through sign language. And it's a skill that he has developed with the charity work that he has been doing over the years. And even blurted a fun fact about it for his country. So you can really feel that he's very authentic and passionate with what he does. If this guy will be given the chance or the microphone come top 5, it could really be game over. And now we go to my runner-up of this list and I'm giving it to Daniel Hansen from Malaysia. Is anyone here surprised that he is ahead of the pack? In this competition, a pageant veteran like him just delivers and it shows with his upbringing Now he's very courteous, respectful, and well-educated. And it showed with his introduction as he talked more about his country and being authentic to his audience at the same time. Daniel's face is really commercial when you look at it. So he really takes the Supra prototype. Never mind if he doesn't possess the height as his rivals in the competition. But more than his aesthetic, it's his communication skills which make which makes his stock higher in this pageant. He won the first round of the Supra chat two weeks ago and is poised to kill it again in the next round. Malaysia has been relatively doing well in the male pageant scene, but but it is looking like he will continue the winning streak for his country in this pageant. He is really the strongest Asian candidate this year. And now we go to my top spot and I'm giving it to, I'm so happy to give it to him, Daniel Samida from USA. Oh, Daniel, I hope nobody can dispute the fact that this American lad crushed the sashing ceremony last night. His introduction was very light to listen to, but his choice of words for it made it a more outstanding piece. He made it fun and cool. He's six too tall and getting taller every day though and keeps aiming for the moon in every aspect of his life. Now he's just very charismatic as a speaker and can easily rouse an audience with that kind of speech. Especially with how he ended his statement stronger coming from a popular quote that which he got from his father was truly the clincher as to why he shoots up to the top of my list. That statement alone resonated so much with me that even if we fall short of our ultimate objective, we, c we will still likely to achieve something significant during the pursuit of our ambitious goal. And if we apply it to Daniel's case right now, that is to win Mr. Supranational despite how the odds can be against him at the very moment. Very inspirational, very aspirational, a James Franco motiv motivational speaker. Well done, USA. 
So there you go, guys. What do you think about my list? Did I miss someone out there who should be part of this list? Well, let me know your thoughts down below for me to check out if we have the same set of favorites as early as now. So until my next video, bye!